Hi, I'm Janice Johnson. I've been teaching science at Hillbrook for six years. I've been fortunate to be given two extra roles. One is to teach a subject called Aspire Science, and the second is to be given a role of starting Hillbrook down the circular economy journey. This is our version of the circular economy that we used at Hillbrook. Without teaching you the full course, I'm just going to summarise what we did to teach this to the students. The first lesson we taught was on systems thinking. There are so many examples out there to display this. We decided to use the simple pencil. The materials that are used to make the simple pencil are sourced from all around the world. The amount of transport that is used for this is incredible. This opens their eyes to the idea that most products are not just so simple. We then gave students an idea to work on, and this was photocopy paper that is not recycled. They had to look at the inputs and the outputs right from the very beginning of creating this paper. From this, they then had to look at ways in which they reduce their impact on the systems, but also on the environment. I was blown away by the fact that these students could look at a problem, they could pull it apart and analyse it, coming up with solutions. The next lesson was discussing the circular economy. There was no point in reinventing the wheel. Ellen MacArthur Foundation has six videos and a series of steps that takes them through this. Following this, we went back to the Ellen MacArthur Foundation's principles of circular economy. Number one, design out waste and pollution. Number two, keep products and materials in use. And number three, the most important, regenerate natural systems. Students love to hear stories and ideas about what's actually happening in real life. This is where we had a look at companies and governments and what's happening with the circular economy where they're working towards or currently are functioning in a circular economy. With this, we can now use the ACE Hub. This gives examples from Australia and all around the world of what's happening in the circular economy. Unfortunately, the Hub was launched in November after we had delivered the course. The fourth lesson we looked at designing out waste and pollution. Here we use the Ellen MacArthur lesson on redesigning plastics. I wanted a real world example for these kids to solve. So what I did was look around the school to find a waste in which they could redesign. This was a difficult task to do. Currently at Hillbrook, we're looking at our tuck shop becoming waste free. I did find bread tags. However, we do recycle these. They still need to be redesigned. I gave this to the students to solve. I was absolutely amazed at the two ideas in which they came up with. One was to make the bread tags out of bamboo. And the second one was to have the end of the plastic bag into two strips where you could actually just tie it. What blew me away was that in November 2020, Tip Top had an article on bread tags. They have redesigned their bread tags and they're now going to make them out of cardboard. These students were so on the mark. Lesson five was what impressed me the most, other than their projects. What we looked at was a copper mine. Copper mine and the processing in a copper mine is very complex, so we simplified it to a few steps showed the students what the inputs and the outputs were in each of these stages, and then I had to teach about the chemistry involved. What they had to do was to come up with ways in which they could make this copper mine more circular at each of these steps. I was so impressed at the ideas in which they came up with. I'm not an expert in this area, however, I do see that some of their ideas were just on the mark. The last lesson, what we looked at, was showing how you can display circular economy ideas. This is using such things as Sankey diagrams, stock and flow diagrams, and radar matrices. What we did next was to give them some ideas on solving the project problem. This problem was to propose or produce something that would make Hillbrook more circular. I'm now going to talk about some of the projects in which these students did. We've been doing a lot of building work here at Hillbrook. In 2020, at the beginning of the year, one of the buildings was completed. This building had a dark grey roof. During the year, there was another building being constructed. The students wanted to know if we could change the roof colour and if this would have a significant effect on the temperature inside the building and hence the amount of air conditioning and electricity it would require. 
the students constructed some models with the roof colours of the current building, the dark grey, and the lighter roof colour that they wanted, and they measured the temperatures inside these buildings. They also used solar panels to see if that would have an insulating effect also. They collected over 70,000 data points using these over three days. What they ended up finding was the lighter roof colour, the surf mist, produced temperatures six degrees less than the darker roof colour that we currently have. The school has implemented the new roof colour onto the new buildings. In this photo, you'll see in the foreground the original colour of the roof, and in the background, you will see the new roof, which has that new colour that the students chose. The next group of students worked on the school uniform. This is a mammoth task. They looked at one aspect of it, which was the microplastics from washing the uniform. Even though there were microplastics found, what we saw under the microscope, unfortunately, our electronic balances were not sensitive enough to measure the differences. At Hillbrook, we're undergoing a transition to a new uniform. This means that there is a lot of uniforms going into landfill. These students looked at the supply chain of our uniform and saw how linear this was. They then looked at what Hillbrook's uniforms would look like to be fully circular. This would require the raw materials for this uniform to be our old uniform. They then looked at what we're currently doing. At Hillbrook, we are recycling our uniforms through a company called Worn Up, making our uniforms into desks. Even though this is better than the linear process, it is still not fully circular. These students identified this. They stated that although this appears to be a great solution, it is not fully circular. The next group looked at sanitary products, a very difficult topic to get information from. These students developed their 21st century skills. They found it very difficult getting information from companies as to where our sanitary products end up. In Queensland, our sanitary products end up in landfill. The students then analysed this and worked out what is the way in which we can move forward here at Hillbrook. What they decided was to inform students as to what is the best option. A fully circular option with different products that are fully reusable or an eco-friendly option. They have produced posters which are now on the backs of the toilet doors to inform students of their choices. Water supply is a huge problem globally. Some students worked on looking at Hillbrook's water usage. They analysed our usage using only the paper bills. They found, going back in time, that we had some leaks. And in some cases, it was up to $10,000 worth of wasted water. They then decided that we needed to have a digital meter. We installed the digital meter. We now get alerts overnight if we are using too much water. They also looked at the toilet flushing system here at Hillbrook. They then came up with a campaign, Use Less, Flush Left. These posters will be installed into the toilets once we've had a standardised period using the water meter to see what the effect is. They then looked at installing some more water tanks from the runoff from the roofs. Looking at both of these particular areas, they worked out they could save water at the school from approximately 140,000 litres a year. A group worked on the viability of getting an anaerobic digester at Hillbrook. First of all, they had to analyse the compost and food waste that we produce here. The students and their teachers had a lovely time analysing the school's food waste for a whole week. Once this was sorted, they found out that 80% of our compost was food waste by mass. The other 20% was from compostable packaging from our tuck shop. This then provided the basis of the raw material for their anaerobic digester, the food waste. They then designed a biodigester with the idea of connecting this up to a barbecue. They then came across some roadblocks. The biggest roadblock was that if Hillbrook set up this device, it would cost them $5,000 a year to set up for the petroleum production licence. They then spoke to Trevor Evans and also wrote a letter to him and to the Queensland Environment Minister saying that this act needs to change. Even though these students produced a very small amount of methane from their biodigester and they came across these other hurdles, they learnt an incredible amount from doing this project. 
The last three projects I'm just going to go over very briefly. They came across many hurdles and failures in their projects. The first one was producing a herb garden that was pumped by solar and these herbs would be used in our tuck shop. The second one was to create a containers for change bin using Arduino. They were hoping that students would be able to scan these containers and it would be charged back onto their student card. The last one was to produce a weather station for Hillbrook using Raspberry Pi and then a data dashboard for the circular economy. Even though the project was completed, we're now waiting for Hillbrook to get the final lot of solar panels installed. What a journey we have been on here at Hillbrook, not only for the students and teachers, but the whole Hillbrook community. So these students have not only learnt 21st century skills, they've learnt how to deal with failures and hurdles along the way. They've looked at the problems of a linear economy and developed solutions to make it circular. These students, like all students globally, have the ability to change our current linear economy into a regenerative circular one.